traveling the globe, extreme fisherman Jakob Wagner risks his life to uncover freshwater beasts of legend. But are the biggest river giants still out there? They are so extremely rare. If you want to catch a big fish, you need to suffer. Now, on the hunt for a prehistoric monster in African waters. It's so hot. Jakob may face his toughest test yet. That's bad. Yeah, it's the gasoline. It's an adventure angler's ultimate quest. Yeah, it's a big fish. To find one of the okay, planet's wait. ultimate monster fish. On the double, oh, Jesus, that's a monster. March 26th, 7 a.m. Extreme angler and conservationist Jakob Wagner begins his expedition on the African continent in the capital city of Kenya, Nairobi. A veteran explorer, Jakob's traveled the globe in search of the world's biggest fish. But this time, he's headed deep into barren wasteland in hopes of finding a monster, yeah. the Nile perch. I just don't know if this is a business class or first class. From Nairobi. It's a business class. He heads north. His destination? one of the most harsh, inhospitable environments on the planet, Lake Turkana in the African desert. In ancient Egypt, Nile perch were revered as legendary hunters. Today, they remain at the top of the food chain, consuming anything that will fit into their massive jaws. Hulking and huge, Nile perch can reach six feet long, weighing over 500 pounds. To find this alpha predator where it lurks, Jakob must overcome jagged, rocky terrain, gale force winds, and blistering, oppressive heat. Challenges even Jakob may not be able to conquer. Thank you very much. It was a really uh, nice flight. That was a good Thanks, flight. Thanks, Mac. Yeah. Thank you very much. But on this trip, Jakob has even more at stake. Friend and parasitologist David Modry is anxious for his arrival offering Jakob a rare opportunity to support critical research. Hi, David. Hi, hi, hi. Fine, fine. This is David Modi, scientist who is actually studying Nile perch. The lake is beautiful, no wind at all. I yeah. hope so, it's not windy now. Yeah, fishing should be amazing. This is what I promised. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> He's a scientist from the Czech Republic, and they are doing your kind of researching project about Nile perch. There are reports that Lake Turkana Nile perch may carry harmful parasites, making them dangerous to eat. If David can prove this vital food source is free of infection, he can help ensure the safety of local tribes who consume it and determine if the Nile perch is safe for export. But his important research has been slowed for one reason. We need somebody who is able to catch a huge fish and to bring the fish on shore for the examination. We spent several weeks here without being able to examine the fish bigger than 15 kilograms. David hasn't seen any parasitic worms in small 30-pound specimens. He needs to find a big one, close to 90 pounds. And that's where Jakob comes in. They were not able to catch a big one. So he called me, hey, would you like to come and help me to catch a big specimen of Nalperj? But sacrificing a fish, even for science, conflicts with Jakob's strict catch-and-release philosophy. I told him, of course, but I will give you only one because I will release all of them. So please, all the equipment goes to the store and all the personal belongings to the left room. Okay. Okay, so try to divide it. David stays just outside the small oasis town of Loyungalani on the eastern shore of Lake Turkana. a central meeting place of four northern tribes, the Samburu, Gabra, Turkana, 
and El Molo. It's the only sign of civilization in the searing, windswept Kenyan desert, a region plagued by drought for two years. On his last night before the hunt begins, Jakob and David fill up on rice, peas, and beans. It looks very good, so let's try it. Mm. Mm. Very good, is it? Yeah. Unable to grow crops, it's a meal the locals would consider a luxury. Day two, 6 a.m. It's an early start. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi. Jakob meets the crewman yeah. Josephat and the captain Peter. Yes. Okay, so let's move the boat. Okay. okay. With a return flight in just 12 days, Jakob has limited time to complete his dual mission, provide a huge Nile perch for parasite research, then find an even bigger Nile perch, reel it in, and release it safely. A little bit more. To get a jump on the fishing, the team launches their small 14-foot boat from the nearby eastern shore of the lake. Captain Peter's vessel is perfectly suited for fair weather fishing. If winds should increase, rough waters could make the boat dangerously unstable, leaving Jakob and the crew vulnerable to another Lake Turkana native, Nile crocodiles. Opportunistic predators numbering in the tens of thousands. Nile crocs are known man-eaters, responsible for an estimated 200 human deaths annually. Surveying the vast expanse of water, Jakob is sure giant Nile perch can still be found somewhere. Lake Lurkana is a big lake, and if you find a big lake, there are big fish, that's for sure. Nile perch live in fresh or brackish water throughout much of Africa, inhabiting major river systems and lakes, anywhere with an abundance of prey. Lake Turkana has a huge food supply, many, many small fish, and that's the reason why Nile perch can grow so huge here. Voracious predators, Nile perch have few natural enemies. A native species in Lake Turkana, in other places, they're considered invasive. Introduced into nearby Lake Victoria, Nile perch are responsible for the extinction of 200 fish species. The lake is quite rough today. Big waves. Hopefully we'll get a Nile perch. Yeah, it can get worse. It's raining, isn't that unusual for this place? <laughs> it is unusual, actually. In this region plagued by drought, Jakob hopes the rain will bring him luck. Oh, yeah, fish, fish, fish on, fish on. Ah. First fish on. He's going to jump. Oh, did you see that beautiful jump? It's a good fish, David. Ooh, yes. Woohoo! Ooh. Yeah, it's a good fish. Okay. Just far, can you hold it? Okay, I try to land it. Okay. Grab the tail. Oh. 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 Give me the line, give me the line, give me the line. Oh. It's a nice size. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Woo. Yeah. Now perch from Lake Turkana, beautiful fish. The real top of the food pyramid here in the lake. And this is a still small one. So this one is too small to dissect it, so let's release it. Okay, let's release this beautiful fish. Bye bye. Okay. Nice fish, really nice fish. The first day I had a fish on, good size and I'll perch, and it was in the middle of the rain storage. It was really amazing. Man, isn't that incredible? Rain in the middle of Kenya. 
It's really rare. The drought busting storm intensifies, forcing the crew to take refuge on an island in the middle of the lake. I wouldn't believe that we are on the Lake Turkana. We have to be somewhere else. After two years of total drought. Yeah. We have to wait a little bit for two or three hours. The wind cools down, but the fishing time is, is, is over. Though Jakob's lost valuable fishing time, the rain is crucial for the locals. Returning to Loyongalani, David and Jakob find the villagers celebrating the storm. The very first rain after two years. So these ladies, they were so happy about the rain. And singing with 11 women is incredible feeling. And it was my first experience like that. It's day three of 12. On his mission to land a monster Nile perch, conservationist and extreme angler Jakob Wagner leads his crew to a remote part of Lake Turkana. It's six o'clock in the morning and we are heading down south. The south end of the lake, an area with limited access to fresh drinking water, is unpopulated. With little fishing pressure, it could hold huge Nile perch. The team will camp for several days. So David's making the long journey over land, trucking in the supplies. Jakob travels by boat, allowing him to fish as soon as he arrives. The best time for trolling is in the morning, let's say between 8 o'clock and 10, maximum 11. That's the, I would say, prime time, hunting time for Nile perch. So we have to be, we have to be prepared. To make the trip by early morning, Jakob needs good weather conditions as they speed south. But the winds increase, making the journey long and treacherous. The wind is definitely stronger than the other day, so we have to be ready because it can get even worse. If it gets worse, it would take more hours, and then we have no enough fishing. After five hours on the rough waters, Jakob and the crew finally reach their destination. Having missed their window to fish, they head to shore for some relief from the high winds. Really hot today. We have to find a place with shade. There are trees over there? Yes. Yeah. The only place where you can stay, it's under the tree, if you want to find a little bit of shade. Here, razor-sharp volcanic rock and stark, isolated trees are scattered about miles upon miles of bleak, infertile ground. It's totally dry, dry desert. There are only rocks, sand, stones, and nothing else. By mid-afternoon, David arrives with the bare necessities to set up camp. Our base camp is really basic. To stay there for three, four days is very unpleasant, but there's no choice. If uh, I want to catch a big Nile perch, that's the best spot on Lake Turkana. With harsh conditions on land, Jakob's ready to get back on the water. He heads out again in the late afternoon the next best time to find hungry Nile perch. We are on a new location. It's always the same feeling. New place, new hope. I give you one shallow lure, I will take a deep lure. We will go around the coast and try to find some good spots, okay? Okay. It's beautiful around. We are very close to the volcano. Nobody's living around, no villagers, so there is no fishing pressure at all. It could be very good. Fish on! Ugh. It's a good fish. Ugh. 
Go, 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 it's a big fish. Okay, go, go, go. Yeah, it looks very good, this fish. Stop the engine, stop the engine. It's a deep water here, it's fine. She's coming up, she's coming up. Probably she's going to jump. The big ones, they don't jump a lot, only once, but most of the time, it's a really beautiful jump. Yeah, it's a big fish, woo! Yeah, very nice mouth perch. Whoa! Yes! Uh, uh, what a fish! What a fish! Whoa! Did you see the mouse? Beautiful! Yes, this is a very good fish. This now perch is at least over 40 kilos. Uh, okay, let's go. Hold the rod, hold the rod. It's beautiful to see such a monster going totally uh. up from the water. Uh. 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 Man, it's a big fish. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a big fish. Let's unhook it. Have a look, it's a huge mouth. This is mouse of, let's say, 90 pounder or 100 pounder now perch. Okay, this is, I would say, the full frame of the now perch mouse. Look. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would be nearly able to stick my, my head into the mouse. So yeah. try to imagine the size of the really big one. Big one. Oh. Okay, it's four feet, four inches. Now the girth two feet and eight inches. It's a perfect sample for David's parasite research, but Jakob's unable to break his conservationist code. I want to release this beautiful fish. He will not sacrifice the fish. Very good, Josfat. It's shallow, we can go in the water here. Yeah. Let's go. You need to help me, Josfat. It's really heavy. Wow, it's a, that's a big nail perch. What a beautiful fish. Uh, we have to be very careful here, here because this is, this is the good spot for crocodiles as well and they are definitely around. So, yeah, I have to watch my back as well. These spines are extremely sharp and they use it like protection, especially the small ones. This Nile perch has a huge eyes because they, they use them for hunting. These huge fins, that's the reason why is the first run so extremely powerful. They are good sprinters, but they get tired really fast. <laughs> Giant Nile perch from Lake Turkana. But as Jakob releases the fish, Thank you, and see you next time. Something strange happens. Bye bye, you can go. This is the direction, bye. <laughs> this is very special. This, n this never ever happened to me. I really think that this fish likes me because, I mean, it's incredible. the fish finally swims away. Now the fish is safe back home in deep water. But Jakob knows the importance of David's research mission. Tomorrow, he'll be back on the hunt for another Nile perch. Day four, 7 a.m. The team prepares for a new day of fishing when Jakob starts to feel ill. But committed to catch a giant Nile perch for research and himself, he heads out anyway. I couldn't sleep for two days now. It's so hot. I don't feel good at all. 
Just fat. Would you mind if we go to the camp? Yes, okay. Jakob is feverish and dehydrated. Unable to fish, his only choice is to return to camp and rest. Can't keep water in my body. So that's the biggest problem. With Jakob out of commission, the expedition is put on hold for two days. Survive here, it's not easy at all, and we have here for fishing. So it's really easy to make a mistake. And if you don't drink enough, that's it, you know. Let's see in the morning if I will feel better or not. Well, I feel a little bit better. I need to rest for another day and then I will be fine, hopefully. A lot of water, day without fishing. It was hard for me, but I'm well rested now, so I can continue with my quest. Let's get a big now. now. Day 6 of 12, finally back on the water, the south end of Lake Turkana is unforgiving. Hot afternoon winds increase, when suddenly, a bite. Ah! Ah! These conditions are a little bit dangerous. Wait, stop, 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 stop. We have big rocks just behind us, big fish on, and we have to keep distance. Our lines are entangled. Go backwards, go backwards, go backwards. Go back, 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 back. Just that it's a very big fish. We have to be very fast. Hold the rod, hold the rod. Friction on the line could cause it to snap at any moment, costing Jakob his catch. Give me the lure. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Reel in a little bit, reel in a little bit. Extreme angler Jakob Wagner's hooked a monster Nile perch. Fighting desperately to untangle his line, Jakob's in danger of losing his catch. Hold the rod up. The fish is still there, I, I can feel it. Yeah, it's still on. Hey guys, wait a sec, one more. Okay, it's free. It's very big fish. It's coming up. Oh, Woo! that's a big fish. This is over 50 kilos. Woo! Yes, whoa. Grab it. Now I have to be really careful because these hooks are extremely sharp. Yeah. Jakob struggles to pull the massive fish safely into the boat. Woo! Hi. Yes! <laughs> That's the fish! Man, thank you very much. Over 60 kilos, maybe close to 70 kilos. Wow. That's a monster, I'm so happy. Yes! But the celebration's short-lived. Exhausted from the struggle, Jakob's catch is in critical condition. He takes the fish to shallow waters. This is a really big fish and I would love to release it. But unfortunately, this fight was too long and now it's the fish is very, very tired and I'm not sure that this fish would be able to make it. So I prefer to give it to David so he can dissect it and continue with this important project for Lake Turkana. I was really happy that I was able to help David, but on the other hand, it was very strange for me because I do catch and release all the time. And I had to ask myself, okay, is it worth to give this fish to David? And it was my mission, so I did it in the end, and I really hope that it's going to help David. Man, I got your fish. It's a big fish. I really hope that it will bring you some more information. Yeah, this is what we need. Oh, it's a nice one. So I'm ready. 
Is that the very first big Nile perch, what you are dissected? This is the biggest I've ever seen here in Lake Turkana. Ingested raw, parasitic roundworms, like those seen here, can cause abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. David hopes the reports of Nile perch infection are false. We want to find them, we want to identify them, and we want to say what's the origin of this parasite, why they are only in big fish and not in the small fish, and if they can harm humans or not. I'm trying to open the stomach, which is unfortunately empty. It's yes. incredible. I see this for the first time in my yeah, life. Yeah. Definitely it's empty. Let's move to the muscles and see whether they are worms or not. So far, nothing. You see, it's nice fish meat. That any customer can be happy with. There is nothing in this one. Nice meat. Yummy, yummy. You see, your fish was healthy. The sample provides important evidence that the huge Nile perch of Lake Turkana may be free of parasites and safe for consumption and export. I'm happy to help David. As well, I hope that I will catch at least one big one which I will be able to release. 6 a.m., day seven of a 12-day expedition. After helping David gather a specimen for science, Jakob is free to continue his personal quest hunting down the ultimate Nile perch. But winds are building, making conditions even more unbearable. Oops. Everything is flying around. I would say this place is not good for humans. It's, it's really unpleasant. The team breaks camp and moves on. Hoping to gather more information on his monster opponent, Jakob decides to visit the El Molo, one of Africa's smallest tribes. For centuries, El Molo tribesmen have hunted the hippos indigenous to Lake Turkana. But hippo numbers have dwindled, forcing the El Molo to rely on fishing for survival. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Jakob. My name is number two. Number two, hi. Nice to meet you, number two. Yeah. Number two introduces Jakob to Isaiah a village elder who's encountered the lake's biggest predators face to face. And is he scared of crocodiles? Uh -huh. Yes. Is that from crocodiles? Yeah. The teeth of crocodiles. Ooh. So these marks are from crocodile teeth? Yeah, this is this crocodile. Jakob is eager to discover what Isaiah knows about Lake Turkana Nile perch. He killed one in Sibloy, very big one. And how many kilos or? I don't know. He better or no? 250 kilos. 250 kilos. Okay. And does he think that there are still such monsters in the lake? Top. Very big. Encouraged by Isaiah's story, Jakob makes a decision. He will continue his quest for a monster Nile perch at Sibiloy. Okay, guys, and hurry up because it's incredible hot. Day nine of 12, it's early morning back at David's house and the crew braves the 100 degree heat as they load up for Sibiloy, a national park on the northeastern shore of Lake Turkana. Even if the El Molo elders quarter ton Nile perch is just a fish story, Jakob knows there could be truth to the tale. The team must carry all the provisions they need in the truck. The boat will join them later in Sibiloy. We have to tie the water very well because that's the most important thing on our way to Sibiloy. If we lose this, you can get into serious trouble. Getting to Sibiloy means crossing 100 miles of lunar-like barren landscape. The trek will take a full day. Eight more hours? Yeah. I'm 
something is leaking. Look at us. That is bad. Come do something else. En route to Siboloi, a place where locals claim Nile perch grow to legendary size, Jakob and the crew face their toughest obstacle yet, a leaking fuel tank. Yeah, it's the gasoline. As gas drains rapidly from the busted pipe, the team is at risk of being stranded. I'm not surprised at all because these roads are really bad. The only luck is that Abu is very good car mechanic, so Let's hope he can fix it. Otherwise, we were in the middle of the nowhere and we would be stuck here at least for a couple of hours. And you never know, maybe even, even for a couple of days. With just a hose clamp and some duct tape, Abu rigs the gas pump, pulling fuel from a tank inside the car. But will it work? Is it going to work? Yes. Man, the gasoline tank is inside the car. Now I have to say this is the biggest freestyle what I have ever seen in my life. You are totally crazy, you know? You know that? But I have to say it looks like it works. Can go. The quick fix pays off. Still, the team has to return to Loyangalani so the truck can be repaired. Anxious to get back to fishing, Jakob rides with the boat north to Siboloi. The journey takes more than three hours. By late afternoon, Jakob and the boat crew reach the waters off Siboloi and resume the search for a giant Nile perch. Nile perch are visual hunters, so that's why I use these colorful lures like this one. Very good lure. Let's try this one. These rocky islands and submerged islands and big rocks are always the best spots, especially around the feeding time. Between nine o'clock and 11 o'clock in the morning, and then from the three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a fish. I told you it's a good place. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Ah! Oh. Okay, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh! Woo! The fish was there for a few seconds, but suddenly it was no fish on. Man, that was a something really huge. Mike's swivel is totally destroyed. This is incredible. This is incredible. I wasn't able to stop the fish at all. I'm still shaking. What just happened, it's, it's totally incredible. My, my coast lock swivel is tested on 75 kilos and it, it was totally bent like that, totally destroyed. That was the fish why, why I'm here on Lake Turkana. But I couldn't stop it. It was just too powerful. This was something really, really huge. It's a shame. And there's more bad news. Arriving on shore at Siboloi, Jakob radios David about the supply truck. So the car is still broken. Without the truck, Jakob's left with limited rations. This is our kitchen in the guest house of Kenya Wildlife Service. And this is basically everything what we have left now. We have bananas, that's for tomorrow breakfast. And uh, I will have a spaghetti and corned beef for dinner tonight. Low on food, Jakob's expedition is cut from 12 days to 10. He has just one more day to catch a giant Nile perch. Ready to go, Peter? Yes. Day 10, 10 a.m. Thank you, Joseph. 
With the pressure on, Jakob prepares for his final attempt. I have to prepare the fishing gear, make a good knot. Otherwise, I get a next big fish and I will lose it again. First of all, let's try the small island here. It's quite shallow, between three and seven meters. It's very good, very good spot. And then we can try the big island. It's like half past 10, so we don't have too much time. But still, it's still it's good. Again, first round really close to the island yeah. and a little bit a little bit faster, between six and seven and a half kilometers per hour. I, I will tell you. Big nalpers are coming from deep waters, you know, to the shallows for hunting. For them it's much easier to hunt in shallow water than in deep water. This is an alperch. And it's a big fish. It's a big fish. It's a big fish. It's a big fish. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there. And it's very, very big fish. Very big fish, Peter. As the line strips out furiously, Jakob hopes he can slow the fish down before it's too late. Still going, still going, but I'm scared off! And it, it broke the line, ah! Oh. It broke the line, ah! Oh. That was a big fish. I couldn't stop it at all. Ah! Oh. You know, 60, 70 kilos, you, you, you can stop the fish. This fish was unstoppable. Ah! Ah! Road line. 3 p.m. It's Jakob's final day to catch a giant Nile perch. Bad weather forces the expedition to a halt. Facing high waves and strong winds, Captain Peter refuses to head out on the water. This place is very dangerous. Frustrated, Jakob can only sit and wait. Fishing is no problem in these conditions. If you are able to run your boat, it's fine. After two hours stuck on shore, Jakob and the crew set out one last time, anxious to salvage their final hours of fishing. A 15-minute voyage under normal conditions. The relentless high winds slow the boat to a crawl for almost an hour. Finally reaching his destination, Jakob prepares his lure and casts into open water. Then, a strike. Yeah, fish on! Oh, guys! It's a monster! This is a monster! Slowly, slowly, go slowly, slowly. Every take from an owl perch is so amazing, but it was incredible take. I wasn't able to stop that fish at all. Take this away, take this away. Take everything, guys, away. Ugh. The wind complicates the fight, moving the boat out of position. We need to go, we need to go, we need to go. Go, 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 go. Josephat maneuvers the boat to match the speed of the fish. I'm trying to get very close to the fish, but it's hard. Be careful with the engine, Josfat, okay? Be very careful with the engine. That's a big fish. Suddenly, the fish bolts yeah, under the good. boat. Go really slowly. Go really slowly. If his line gets caught in the propellers, Jakob could lose his prize catch. 
one touch of Jakob's fishing line on the boat's spinning propeller, and his final opportunity will be lost. Now we have to be really careful with the engine, guys. Okay, just five. Stop the engine, and I try to turn on the other side with my rod, okay? I go on the other side, okay? Okay, this fish is extremely heavy. Ah, oh, it's a big fish. It's a big fish. Then, ah. the massive perch dives deep, and Jakob fights to hang on. I have no clue how, how big is this fish, but it's like a stone. I can't move it from the bottom. Ah. Extreme angler and conservationist Jakob Wagner wrestles a mammoth Nile perch while his crew maneuvers in high winds. I'm trying to pull a fish on the surface, but it's incredible strong fish. Man, this has to be... Oh, Jesus, that's a monster! Man, that's a big fish! Wow! Uh, okay. Hold the rod, hold the rod. Be careful. It's extremely strong. I will try to grab the line. Rocked by waves, pulling a giant fish into a boat is extremely difficult. Go down, go behind, go behind, behind. Jakob's success rests in the hands of his crew, who are inexperienced with monster fish. Now you have to start the engine again. Okay, reel in a little bit. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Okay, okay, okay. One, two, three. Wow. Woo. Yes. That's a big nail perch. It was really difficult to pull the fish in the current, but it's still beautiful fish. I would say around 60 kilos, 120, 130 pounds. Very nice fish. But now, Jakob has another Nile perch in imminent danger. Pulled to the surface too quickly, the fish's air bladder, an organ used to regulate buoyancy, has overinflated. Without help, the fish can't submerge or survive. So we have to go somewhere very close to the shore and try to find a place where there will be less wind, at least. in the fish gets bigger and they are like balloons so they can't dive they are splashing on the surface but they can't dive again so you have to take a needle and put it in the body of the Nile perch and adjust the air from the body the procedure known as fizzing can cause further harm if done improperly puncturing a vital organ but Jakob's expert knowledge of Nile perch anatomy guides his hand precisely. So if you can turn the fish belly up, okay? You know, needle like this, yeah, yeah. not a big one, you know? Yeah. Because then you can kill the fish. Okay. But with, with such a small needle, oh. no problem at all. And you see this place? Yeah. You see this place? Yes. Really carefully. You go with the needle down. And you see the bubbles? Yes, yes. You, you see the bubbles? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the air in the fish. So you have to take the air away, and then the fish will survive without problem at all. Okay, take the needle away. Okay, put the fish in the water, back like this. Now we have to wait a little bit. This dorsal fin is really amazing, and it's really typical for an owl perch. You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, really sharp and, and hard bony spines. They are sharp like knives. The mouse, have a look. The mouse is it's incredible huge, you see? The tail fin is bigger than my head. This is the reason, you know, why they are so fast, why they are so good hunters, you know? The fish is much better. It's ready to go, but before we release it, I want to measure it. 
Okay, can you hold it? It's four feet, eight inches. Very nice fish, four feet, eight inches. Now let's measure the girth. Okay, and it's three feet, two inches. Three feet, two inches. Okay, now let's release the fish. What an extreme fishing expedition with all this wind on Lake Turgana. But I'm very happy that I was able to help David with his research project. And now even more because I caught another big nile perch and I was able to release it back to the lake.